Voodoo Donut, the Portland-based creators of the Maple Bacon Donut. I've been there and it's a pretty awesome donut shop, and I definitely recommend checking it out if you're ever in Portland. However, you will need to put up with a whole lot of this. Or you can save the plane ticket money and make it yourself. You know, as much crap as we give hipsters, they really did contribute to the world of gastronomy. One of them being adding bacon to everything. Everything. And today, we here at Taste Cut and Kitchen will be making the maple bacon donut. Hey, I'm HRJ, CRJ's hipster cousin. Just wanted to let you mainstreamers know that putting bacon on our donuts is no longer our mason jar of kombucha. Instead, we're topping them off with pickle twist tart and sweetened fermented goat milk. It's served on an old Epson laser printer paper tray. Um, okay. Anyway, here are the wet ingredients. Now, I made some tweaks to my old donut recipe, maybe because the donuts came out a little too, um, bread-like. So I made a few tweaks here and there. Anyway, here's what you're gonna need. One cup of warm milk, like last time. Two and a half teaspoons of yeast, also like last time. But this time we're gonna mix the yeast and the milk together so the yeast can wake up. All right, now let's add a third of a cup of white sugar. One cup of melted unsalted butter. One egg and two, count them, two egg yolks. And finally, one teaspoon of salt. Mix it all together. Next, get the stand mixer and grab out the hook attachment. Then add three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Next, add all of our wet ingredients. You just have to break on me while you're filming. That's official. This thing's busted, so I had to um, mix the dough by hand. Anyway, when you eventually get it into a bowl like this, take a large bowl and spray it with nonstick spray. Place our dough into it. And let it ride for about an hour. All right, as you can see, our dough has ballooned up, so punch it down. Now, once you have it out of the bowl, using a rolling pin and flatten that to about a quarter inch. Okay, this is about a quarter inch. Now, instead of cutting them into circles, we're gonna cut them into bars. And for that, we need a pizza cutter. All right, once you cut out a square that is clean and perfect as you can possibly get, cut it in half like so. And uh, let's space them out about two inches. And just uh, transfer them onto a tray. And uh, do the same with the leftover dough. Now in a straight sided saute pan, fill it up halfway with frying oil and bring it up to 375. Did your continent receive a huge amount of asylum seekers only for the governing bodies to completely botch it yet still feel the need to look down your nose at America? That's right, I read the papers. Then the number you're looking for is 190 degrees Celsius. Okay, once our fryer hits 375 degrees, gently dunk in our dough. And once they turn brown, flip them over. And after 10 to 20 seconds, they're done. Once they're done cooking, transfer them to another seat lined with paper towel. Now, while these cool down, Let's make the frosting for our donuts. 
a cup and a half of powdered sugar, three tablespoons of milk, one teaspoon of maple flavor extract, and a tiny squirt of brown food coloring. Let's get it all together. And now for the fun part, decorating. Let's take a donut bar, dip the top in our frosting, and top it off with a few crumbles of bacon. Yeah, I know Voodoo Donut uses bacon strips, but I prefer to chop mine up. Well, you're guaranteed to get more bacon in one bite, and the little strips of bacon don't slide off when you bite into it. And there we go, folks. You now know how to make your own maple bacon donut without having to put up with a bunch of unicycle riding weirdos. Actually, unicycles have gotten too mainstream. We're actually using the Benz Peyton motor wagon. I modified mine so it could be powered off the runoff from my compost pile. I'm not even gonna question that. This has been Jay's Cutting Kitchen. I'm CRJ, making cooking fun and meaning it this time. <laughs>